Okay, Abraham, uh, you can go on. And good afternoon, Junior. Okay, hi, everyone. Uh, am I audible? Yeah, you are. Okay, so I think uh, this week's uh, challenge, uh, I have uh, I have given time a little bit of time to just go through the uh, the document. It's about uh, fraud detection, which is uh, very interesting and uh, important uh, real uh, business uh, problem. So uh, this week's challenge is uh, about uh, that. So we we are expected to uh, develop uh, a, a model to uh, detect uh, fraud uh, so we are uh, expected to use to try and uh, compare different uh, models uh, i saw them uh, listed on the challenge document uh, and after that we 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 need to also develop a flask application to to make it uh, you know available uh, on the on the web so this uh, this is my understanding uh, so far uh, just maybe uh, ask uh, a maybe some uh, uh, question uh, i see uh, a list of uh, models to uh, to try and uh, compare and uh, CNN, uh, RNN, some of those uh, models are used for, uh, you know, image, uh, uh, you know, different models have the different, uh, you know, category uh, for doing uh, different uh, tasks. So are we, are we expected to uh, uh, use this, uh, the listed uh, models, all of, all of them for, for this week's challenge? This is my question. Uh, thank you. Okay, thank, thank you, uh, Rob. And also thank you, Matthias and Junior, for sharing your understanding. So to address Abraham's question, yes, uh, you don't have to use or apply all of the models, but make sure to have a neural network model or a deep learning model. At least two deep learning models. So maybe some somehow uh, LSTM based and also multi-layer perceptron. Try to use different variation of neural network models, and also from the machine learning models. Try to uh, use the different ones. So, for example, if you are using a boosting model, you use one gradient boosting model and a tree based model. So, for example, decision tree based model, which is random forest. So, you use source models from picking one each, picking one from uh, somehow each categories. So, try to approach it in that way. So, I'll uh, just immediately start then. Let me just share the challenge document. So I hope it is visible. Okay, so uh, this is week eight uh, of uh, artificial intelligence mastery. So the this the project would be improving detection of fraud for cases for e-commerce and bank transactions so <clears throat> your uh, data and a data scientist at other innovations bank and so this company is in the financial se technology sector and they focus on solutions for e-commerce and banking sector so which is your task it would be to improve the detection of fraud cases for e-commerce based transactions and bank credit card transactions so your the goal is to create an accurate and strong fraud detection models that can handle um, a different most type of transaction data so the, this doesn't mean you will create uh you'll create one model i mean you'll create one single model for both data but it, it means you will have for e-commerce type you'll have a separate model and for the transaction data you'll have a separate model too so the basic idea of uh, good fraud detection is to improve transaction security and by using 
machine learning advanced machine learning models and detailed data science uh, data analysis and data science so you can spot fraudulent activities more accurately so that's the end goal and this project will involve analyzing and pre-processing transaction data creating and engineering features so for example you have to create features from data create features from different uh, columns and evaluating model performance and also deploying models for real-time fraud detection and set setting up monitoring and continuous improvement for those models. So for this week's challenge, you will have uh, three data sets, which means uh, one would be fraud data. So fraud data is an e-commerce transaction data. So we have a user ID, sign up time, purchase time, purchase value, device ID, source, browser, sex, age, and IP address. And lastly, class representing uh, one and zero, having one and zero. So one indicates fraudulent transaction and zero indicates non-fraudulent transaction. And so you will like, most of the columns are um, self-explanatory. So which means device ID is just a unique identifier for the device sources. So, how how the user landed on that e-commerce site and the browser they used so sex is for gender and age is age the age for the user and the next is to understand the country of um, the the current transaction so you will have ip address to country so which means it maps the ip addresses to country so lower bound ip addresses uh is the lower bound of the IP address range, the upper bound IP address is the upper bound of the IP address range, and country is the corresponding country to the IP address range. So you will have such range. So any IP address that fall into that range would be would actually belong to that particular country. And the third data set is credit card.csv and this has time. Uh, the number of seconds elapsed between the transaction and this transaction in the first, the first transaction in the data sets and v1 up to v28 and you have to read more on this one how to actually uh, this is uh, these are anonymized features for result uh, resulting from principal component analysis transformation and their exact nature is not disclosed for privacy reason so now it's somehow the transformed version of the initial uh, data. So they represent same patterns in the data. So these are variance one up to variance 28. So you have to understand, try to read more and understand what each variance means. And the amount is the transaction amount in dollars and class means at the same as the previous e-commerce data, which represents one as one means fraudulent transaction and zero means non-fraudulent transaction. So now the skills and learning outcomes from this project would be creating a REST API for machine learning models, deploying machine learning models, containerizing application using Docker, developing end-to-end -end deployment pipelines, implementing scalable and portable machine learning solutions. And the knowledge part of this would be principles of model deployment and serving best practices of creating REST APIs. So what should we, what, what kind of patterns and configurations you have to follow, techniques of for real-time prediction serving, security consideration in API development, and methods for monitoring and maintain, maintaining deployment models. So uh, this, this week's challenge is uh, somehow a two weeks challenge. So which means we will have an interim one submission on Wednesday 19th of June, an interim two submission on Saturday 20th of June, final submission on Wednesday 26th of June. So you will have, we'll, we, we actually decided to give you more time in order for you guys to focus on uh, the data, to focus on the models and also to focus on how to orchestrate each, each components of the project. So uh, the deliverables would be data analysis and pre-processing is the first one. So we'll perform EDA, basic data handling and cleaning, merging data sets. So for example, you have uh, 
Sorry. Uh, you have to merge. <clears throat> You have to merge the data set for geolocation analysis, which means you have an IP address in the e-commerce uh, data set, and you have also an, an IP address to country mapping. So you have to merge those and try to analyze and understand the data more. And for the feature engineering part, transaction frequency, velocity for fraud data CSV, and time-based features for fraud data CSV. So this one, you can actually apply it. I don't think we have dates in the since we don't have data you can, yeah we have yeah we don't have dates so if we if you can uh, create a date a date variable for, for credit card you will do this and the next part would be normalizing and scaling and encoding categorical features so these are the task one descriptions so and for task two model building and training the first thing is to prepare your data so which means future and target separation. So you'll use, it's just one is uh, start with a capital C and the, the letter starts with a small C, small letter C, so that's a, just a difference. So these are the target, our target variables. And now you will do train, test, split. So make sure to test, train and test, make sure you do your splitting before actually uh, in the data pre-processing part. So store it in a separate way now, because you will give just give your model the whole training set. While training, don't do the training and the splitting. Just do it before. And the model selection with several models to compare performance. So you will use regression model, decision tree models, which is random for us, boosting models like XCG boost and multi-layer perceptron and neural networks like LSTM, RNN. So if these are not feasible for this particular case, or if you don't find them feasible, try to use another form of neural network models. So you can just uh, use a basic uh, TensorFlow for this case, or you can use just PyTorch. Can just uh, create your own models from scratch and train them. Uh, so we, we want you to more uh, to explore and focus more on task two and task three. So the next step would be model training and evaluation. So you train your models for both for both data sets, and so you have to understand each variations and each performance. So the next part would be machine learning operation steps. So versioning, experimenting, training. So tracking so you will have to use tools like mlflow to track experiments log parameters and met parameters metrics and version models so try to version your models try to log parameters and also log metrics so you, you have to use mlflow to apply that and the next part would be model explainability so model explainability is uh, explainability is uh, crucial for understanding and understanding trust and debugging a model so it's just uh what are how how your model is actually understanding the data set you have to explain it you have to understand it so that's why we added model explainability and you have to use you'll use shape shapely additive explanations and lime local inter interpretable model agnostic explanations so you have to interpret the models based on the two tools. So if you are like to use Sharp, Sharp well, they both have a different kind of approach. So you have to understand that too. So Sharp just provides unified measures of future importance. So it unifies which features are actually important for each prediction. And so you have to you will install it and you will primary plot so provide an overview of the most important features for plot is just visualize the contribution of features for a single prediction and dependency plot. Dependence plot would show you the relationship between feature and the model output. And for Lime, it, uh, it explains individual prediction by approximating the model locally with an interpretable model. So which means it has it has feature importance models. So shows the 
most influential future for each prediction. So we, we will use this and try to explain the mo our models. And the uh, final task would be model deployment and API development. So now you first set up your Flask API. You now last week you used Fast API, and now we, we, we will use Flask API. So you will create a Flask application, create, you will have to get just follow the basic step of creating an API using Flask. The next is API development, defining API endpoints and testing them. And the next and the, the crucial task would be dockerizing the Flask application. So now you create a Docker file and after that you'll just uh, copy and paste this model. So if your uh, Flask application is called servmodel.py, you'll use servmodel.py, but if not, you'll use another uh, command here. This is the command that actually executes when the container launches. And the next bit would be building and running the Docker container. So you will build Docker build, you will build the actual model, I mean the actual dockerized application, uh, the Docker container, and the next would be to run the Docker container. So assuming you are exposing 5000 here, you will also uh, expose it in while you're running your container. And for the tutorial side, we will have uh, fraud detection in e-commerce and credit transactions uh, right up next, uh, Monday afternoon, which means next. And on Tuesday, we will have, Tuesday morning, we will have model building and tra tra training, including neural networks and MLOps using MLflow given by Radit. Model explainability will be given by Kerod and model deployment and API dev using Flask would be given with Yaya. And as I've mentioned, you will have an interim submission, uh, first interim submission on Wednesday, and the second interim submission on, uh, maybe just type the dates here. Wednesday, I think it's 19th of June, 2024. And the final submission will be 26th of June. And this would be Saturday, 22nd of June, 2024. So the interim submission will be a link to your GitHub and the final submission would be a blog post and link to your GitHub code. So we actually uh, encourage you to write a blog post on, me on Medium and paste the link or a PDF report, but we actually uh, suggest you do the Medium part because you will you can, now you have the chance to show your work for the whole world because you, you will publish it publicly. You don't have to just share a link. Anybody that is interested in fraud detection will actually land on your medium, and medium has the highest SEO rating. So anybody that who is searching, if you actually have searched how to implement such things, medium is around the third or the fourth link, basically after GitHub issues, Stack Overflow, Stack Exchange, medium would be around the four or the third so it's really uh, advantageous for you guys if you post it on media so these are some references in modeling model explainability flask and fraud detection any question you can just raise your hand and ask Okay, thank you. not used for that part. I meant like, so for the time, there is a time column in credit and the credit card. So from that time, if you can actually create the actual date, great. I don't think you can, but if you can try it, if it's possible, you can do it. I don't, uh, uh, I'm, I'm sure it is not, uh, yeah, no, I, do, I don't think you can. Yeah, so you cannot. So just yeah, leave 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 the date part for only for the e-commerce data.
this is an exciting project, so make sure to actually fo really focus into it. Any other question? Okay, so it, was that clear? If it's clear, maybe you can just react. If it's not clear, you can react in thumbs down and we'll just go through it again if we have to. Okay, Nadia, you can go. Uh, Nadia, if you are speaking, I can't hear you. Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, okay, uh, thank you guys for joining. Uh, if you have any questions, make sure to mention it on Slack. And also you can reach out to me and the other tutors. If you, if you don't have any questions, you can just end the session here. Okay, uh, thanks guys. I'll just stop the recording and end the call. Bye.